Rebecca! Oh, hey, Brittany. How's it going? It's going good. Where were you last night? Me and Stacy were were just out all night. We were just partying. Yeah, I, I heard you guys are out. Um, yeah. Yeah, John was telling me about it, actually. Oh, really? You know John, right? <sighs> yeah, it's your, your husband. How's he been? He's uh, been really good, apparently. Apparently, yeah. he hung out with you guys last night. Is that true? Hung out with us? Yeah, he said he found you guys last night at the, at the club. Um, John, I don't know. I haven't seen him in such a long time. Maybe maybe we said hi to him, but I, I can't remember. Yeah, that's how I know you're fucking lying to me. What do you mean, Rebecca? Literally, Stacy, the bitch you were with, told uh, me everything. So don't fucking play with me. She, what did she tell you? You know she's uh, been she on Xanax. She just Xanax. told me um, everything. She just told me everything, you fucking uh -huh. backstabber. She has been on so many prescription drugs. Oh I don't even God. think she I knew knows. You would say that. I knew you would say that. What year it is. She's been through a sometimes. lot. Okay. She's been through a what lot. What did she tell Unlike you? Unlike you, the only thing you've been through is dick. Oh clearly. my. Rebecca. No, I'm serious. I'm so mad at you right now. What happened? You fucked John. No. You sucked all over John's John. No. You sucked all on it last night. What do you mean? Stacy sent me the proof, Brittany. Oh my God. You what? stupid bitch. Oh my god. Rebecca, you're breaking my heart with this. What do you mean? You literally... I would never suck on John's John. That's it. I've had enough of this. Oh my god. Rebecca. I, I, I fucking hate you, it. you fucking bitch. Shit. Hold what? on. What? Hold on. What, what could you possibly say? Get, get back here. <laughs> what are you doing? Whoa, 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 welcome back. Welcome back. It is the shittiest podcast on the internet. And we got Alex and Lonnie, as per usual. And uh, honestly, today I've, I've been doing some thinking. Like, we just got done watching some basketball. We you did. Know, we love basketball. But um, even more so than basketball, I'd say, you know, a good player – always has a good nickname absolutely 100 percent. and i'd say uh i would love and i would just love to pick your brain on this topic because there's some awesome nicknames out there in the sports community in the in the sports world there right? is actually from the fucking from the 20s all the way up to today like there's so many people that have been around so i would love to hear what you would consider some of the greatest nicknames of all time like a top five Top, top, top five per se. If you want so, to, if you wanted to, if you want to go there, if I if we should take it there, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> you know what's actually crazy about nicknames? Like we were we were talking about this. We were watching the uh, the Cavs and Knicks game. Sadly, my Cavs lost, but um, wah, 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 wah. but um, we were talking about how like a great nickname fits the person. Yeah, right? it's it's more than just a word. You know, right. it actually fits their character, yep. or what they do, yep. like on the field, depending on what sport they play. Obviously, you know, like a good nickname fits who they are, or what they represent. So, I would start with probably my f personal favorite nickname of all time. He's also my favorite boxer of all time. We'll we'll, uh, we'll alternate. Like, what's your what's your fucking favorite, and then we'll go with my favorite. Okay. So, honestly, truthfully, my favorite. Well, first of all, my favorite boxer and my favorite nickname of all time, Iron Mike Tyson. Yeah, that's a fucking good one. I mean, dude, Mike Tyson was fucking – not only was he relentless, ferocious, yeah. fucking maniac. All those things. Um, But, yeah, like what fits better than someone who's just a destroyer in the ring and you and his nickname is Iron Mike Tyson? Yeah, he was also notorious for having like a fucking iron chin, you know. Like, yeah. He didn't not like not until like the end of his career there, like he was fucking unstoppable. You yep. know, like truly just like fighting a piece of iron. So yeah. the nickname couldn't be more fitting. I mean he was built know? like a fucking shit brick house too. Oh like in his God, prime, dude. he was built like fucking an iron man. He was built like seventeen bulldogs mashed into one human being. Definitely. And just Definitely. fucking throttle people. Zero percent, the least amount of body fat you could possibly have on a human. Zero percent survival factor if you step in the ring. <laughs> Dude, you're insane. not walking out okay. Um, 
yeah, Iron Mike Tyson's phenomenal. I'd say another phenomenal nickname. I don't even know if I could consider this number one. I'm just like spitballing like what I can remember off the top of my head. I'd say one of my favorites would be um, Irvin Magic Johnson. Irvin Magic Johnson. I mean, what, like we he that nickname is so iconic. We don't fucking call him Irvin. He's just Magic Johnson. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I like I like the nickname Magic because again, it kind of encapsulated his like style of play. Like one thing, like that's like the sad thing. Like we're just two young guys. Like we didn't get to witness his prime. Like we didn't get to witness his greatness. But you know, I watched the um, I watched that uh Lakers show that came out, that Showtime Lakers show on HBO. Oh yeah, dude. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's phenomenal. You should definitely give it a watch. But um, I was watching it and like. He came up with his own nickname, essentially, you know, like he's just like when you fucking when I when I fucking when I'm on the court, it's magic. When I fucking do what I do, it's magic. You know what I mean? Like, so it really and and if you watched him play like in his prime, like I know my dad saw him in his prime and I know probably countless other people have, you know, uh, he's definitely, you know, for the old heads. But at the same time, you can't you cannot discredit the fact that that's not only an iconic nickname, but for one of the greatest basketball players ever. Oh yeah. Um, same topic of fucking basketball. Uh, a couple other great ones. The Admiral David Robinson oh, played for the Spurs course. in the in the nineties. Big Rob, dude. People I don't feel, realize how good he was. And you know why? I feel like it's because he was kind of in the same time period as. Not only MJ, he was in the he same was time period as MJ, right? Because obviously nobody was MJ. Nobody was as big or as good as MJ. But, but even even at his position, though, yeah, Hakeem Olajuwon, mm-hmm. Hakeem, wasn't his uh, nickname I'm sorry. Dream Shake? I'm sorry, no, it's that was his move. His the dream nickname shake. was the Dream, which is also That's one of the greatest great nicknames. Great nickname, Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. It's one of the greatest nicknames, and that was probably also on my list, dude. Hakeem the Dream. Spoiler alert over here, but yeah, um, that's a fucking phenomenal nickname for another phenomenal player. So, but I feel like that's why he, David Robinson, really got overshadowed because he was playing in the same type period as arguably the number two best player of all yeah, time, like some of Michael the Jordan players of all time. Um, like and then like all of the great ones. Hakeem, and then he also played in the same time period when uh, Shaq came in. Big Diesel. Big Diesel. So here's the thing. This is a good. Que- this will be a good question. That's completely on topic. Okay. What's Shaq's nickname? Is it Shaq or is it Big Diesel or is it like Diesel? You know. What um. I mean? Like his name is Shaquille O'Neal. His name that. is Shaquille O'Neal. Well, we so we call him Shaq. So I don't Shaq think his nickname. Now? Technically, I don't think his nickname would be Shaq because. You think that's like a cheat? That's like that's almost a cheat. Unf- that's, that's almost un- like there's obviously people that have nicknames that are like shortened versions of their names or that are like their names, but it still just feels like it's cheating. For right. Shaq. I don't right. know why. Maybe it's because I, I honestly I don't know why, but it, for him it feels like cheating. It does feel like cheating because he's Shaquille slash Shaq slash like he's already so iconic. Diesel is is a good nickname for him because even without the nickname of Shaq. Because that's basically just a shortened version of his name. It's, a, it's basically like a cop-out nickname. Right. But his real nickname, Diesel, I mean, yeah, that's a fucking – Amazing like, When name. you think of Diesel, what do you – like a big fucking diesel truck. Diesel truck. That would fucking – 18-wheeler. Oh, my – that That's would, what the fuck he that was. Would plow through everything. Yes. You know, that would not, that would not be stopped by yes. an average means. And that's what he fucking was. And that's what he did. He arguably – not. it's not even really arguably, you know, like – I guess the only argument you can make would probably be Wilt, but Shaq was the most dominant player in of all basketball. Time. So having a name like Diesel. You I know, feel like, you know what is crazy? Like, another, once again, another fitting name. Shaq, when he was in his prime playing for the Lakers, with those when he three-peated with Kobe. Oh, yeah. Like, he was probably in that three-year run the most unstoppable player in NBA history just mm-hmm. because of the fact that his game wasn't predicated on, you know, sometimes you get uh, an amazing shooter like a Steph Curry or a Kyle Korver or a, a Ray Allen or all these greats. They could get shut down. They can get shut down. No part they can of have an Shaq's, off night. No part of Shaq's game could be shut down. When he was in his prime on the Lakers those He's three years. He's always putting up 20 and 10 at the very least. You're getting a double-double out of Big Shaq. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. you can't, you can't – sh- 
any part of his skill set, you can't shut down because it's basically just him being bigger, stronger, and better than you, which is a pretty, it's a pretty good plan for him. Like I'd say, it's a pretty good plan to take on guys in the NBA, dude. And bigger, it's just faster, like stronger. not only was he just fucking dunking, putting his probably Big black balls. twelve inch cock right on your face, mm-hmm. but he was mean about it, which kind of made it better. I love the clip of him bullying. Pushing the pacing yeah, guy. Yeah, that white dude. <laughs> I love it when he, he just fucking, that guy. He fucking dunks on him, like rubs fucking, his nuts on his back. He pushes him. Hits up and pushes him to the and floor. Hits, and then hits him with a fucking, ah, and fucking points dude. at him. Dude. So disrespectful. Actually, so we're going to put that. We gotta, we're going to put that up on screen right now. Boom. Um, but, dude, that clip is one of the most iconic love basketball clip. clips of all time. Love that clip. Um, another nickname, uh, almost disrespect because we mentioned him, but we didn't say his nickname yet. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bean Bryant, AKA the black Mamba. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Kobe. Uh, yeah, that's also one of the, that's also a fire nickname. (sighs) One of the greatest nicknames ever. It's so fucking fitting. Once again, you know, it's just, it encapsulates him perfectly. You know, Dude. like he is the black mom. That's like, you can't think of a more fitting a nickname. A fucking killer. A killer. Cold-blooded reptile. Dude, I was about to Fuck say that. <laughs> Murderer. <laughs> Could not be fucking stopped, dude. Like literally, like he was a fucking nutcase. Yeah. The most, like put Kobe's brain in Shaq's body and you have oh my God. the most broken player. Like that's like, you know, 2K that's like 2K created yeah. player type deal. 50 and not a game. even That's not even like my career type level. That's like you just created a player with 99 everything. 50 a game. That's what it would be if Kobe had Shaq's like 50 body. and 20 a game. Because if Kobe was in that body, he would be like, I could try to figure out how to shoot some threes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, and he would fucking do it. And yep. he would fucking take 10,000 threes a day and fucking <clears throat> make them. Well, you and know what's crazy? Be the next best thing. Kobe yeah, not Kobe's only, mentality, the Mamba mentality, if you will. Not only was he legendary. a cold blooded killer on offense, he would take your soul. Defense. A he would defender. get up and in your people, fucking jersey. People don't give him enough credit for that. They don't. Because dude, I don't he know would, I don't know the exact uh number or exact like statistics for it, but how many I, all team? Yeah. I, I'm assuming it's at least around couple. ten. It's probably around ten. Because he was he was probably he probably wasn't making first team, but most definitely. No, I think he was. Team. I think he was, dude. I think he would. I think Not consistently for like in his prime, like in his best years. Yeah, yeah, I would say first team, but I would say he was also hovering in like second, like probably. the way LeBron kind of does. Mm-hmm. Like LeBron isn't always first team and right. defense, but he's usually like third team or something like that. Yeah, dude, Kobe for a, for a good stretch there, like the ten years that he was like fully in his prime, he was probably. One of, if not the best two way player in all of basketball for a good like almost decade. Yeah, and it's and it's almost sad because I didn't watch him enough, you know. And I it's, I can say that about a lot of like yeah. sports players is like, you know, <clears throat> it's like. Well, he almost was a little bit past like, our time. But I was a kid, right? Yeah. So I didn't know, and it's like, how do you know? For you anyone know who I mean? doesn't know, we're both twenty one, so. Yeah, we're both twenty one. So Kobe, when Kobe was winning his when Kobe was winning, we were like Shaq. eight or nine, like seven, seven through nine. You know, we were like in that age range, and it's like we were too young to understand the greatness. But now that we're older, we can see like fuck. I could have been watching these games and paying attention and seeing greatness live, but I just had no idea, and I fucking hate that. You know, it's like yeah, as a kid, you don't, you know, because obviously not everybody cares about sports, but as a kid, you know, you don't realize you care about sports yet you know right right so it's just like fuck man like i could have been watching kobe in his prime i could have been watching shaq like right after his prime like still pretty much shaq diesel okay this is like somewhat off the topic because we 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 went from the nicknames to kind of venturing off into our basketball but this is kind of on the same topic because i was just thinking about this because kobe uh, you know, rest in peace. He passed away, yeah. um, tragically. But uh, I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, this is venturing off from basketball to a little bit about music. Okay. If they were all still alive today, I'm gonna give you three people. Mm. 
Pop Smoke, Juice World, yeah, XXX. All right. Who would be bigger? If neither, if none of them passed away, they were all alive today. Whose music would be the biggest? I. And who would be the best? I I, I have one, and I know who you're gonna pick. I, yeah, so I'm go a ahead. Biased, go ahead. I have a biased answer. Yeah. And it's Juice for both for both questions you asked. My answer would be Juice because I do think X um, could be potentially as big or would have been potentially as big as Juice, but Juice did so much in such a short amount of time. And then Pop Smoke, I mean, really only had like I didn't I honestly haven't listened to much Pop Smoke. You know, I know he has I know a couple of his songs, but he only really had like the one main album, right? Like, he didn't drop a bunch of albums, you know, but yeah. Juice has had at least, like, three albums. X has had at least, you know, two or three albums. So, they have a bit more of a of a discography to work with. So, I think, um, plus, they were all very young. They were all incredibly young. And they I were Pop all Smoke 20. Was, was Pop Smoke the same age? I Pop Smoke Pop, was 20. That fucking voice, I, I thought he was, like, 38. Dude, the fucking... That's a, that is he done he did have an awesome voice. That was that's honestly voice. why I think his music was pretty popping because his fucking his his sound was very iconic. You knew like if no, if he jumped even on if a it's track, not iconic. It's unique. You, you know, know kind of yeah. You, can't, you, lo- you people love unique man. It's, you know it's when someone when someone hops on a track and you're like, who the fuck is that guy? Like, and you're like, you research him, whatever. You know when fucking like pop when smoke. pop smoke hopped on the track, you could tell it was him. You knew it was him exactly, but um. And I, because the funny thing is, right before I got into Juice, I was like a super big X guy, right? But the only reason I would say I like Juice more was because he was able to produce, or not produce, but he was able to just release more stuff. And also, like, I've seen the way Juice World freestyles. Like, I saw the YouTube videos. I've seen the hour-long Tim Westwood Eminem freestyle where he was just going off of Eminem beats and freestyling for an hour straight, like... Pop Smoke didn't do that. Fucking XXX didn't do that. Yeah. And although XXX, he was definitely not a freestyle artist. And same with Pop Smoke. Neither of them no. are freestyle artists. No. Juice was so good that he was a freestyle artist that would take his freestyles and could turn them into fucking actual pop hits. Like, not pop, but actual hits. You know what I mean? Like, he could take a freestyle and turn it into a hit. Whereas X... Um, would just write a song or pop song or I assume would just write a song. I don't think they were as, um, I don't think they did it as much as off the top of the dome. And I think that's such a, I think that's such a fun thing for a rapper to be able to do. And I think that would have propelled juice world into like that upper echelons of like the rap game. You know what I mean? Right. More right. so than the other two, because juice was just so good at freestyle, you know, and I'm sure you've heard, I'm sure you've heard some of them. So, yeah, he was just so good off the dome that I feel like that would have ended up catapulting him much more than the other two. Yes. Okay, so in my opinion, I, I get where you're coming from because I know that Juice, as far as – I think if they were all alive today, Juice or X would have been the biggest. Um, And I know where you're coming from with Juice because his lyrics – lyrically, he was better than both X and Pop Smoke. But in my yeah, opinion – in my opinion mm-hmm. – if they were all alive today, yeah, I think Pop Smoke's music and impact would have been bigger than both X and Juice, and here's why. So you, you kind of get that feel of like old school versus new school, right? In today's like rap hip-hop game, XXX, Juice World. It's more of the Trippy same. Trippy Red. It's more of the same. Um, right? yeah, who else? Lil Uzi Vert. Fucking um, all of these guys. They're not necessarily super duper different. They're not that much different, and and not in a not necessarily a bad way. But that's all very new school. Yeah. Pop Smoke totally was agree. one of the youngest. Out of all of them, he was only twenty, and he was. I feel like he was going to be the bridge between. Old that school, classic school. old school 50 Eminem, he would have fit in with that kind of school and he would have bridged that into this era. And I think he would have stood out because of that. I do. And I, I, I definitely agree. My only thing is I feel like 
and I once again this could just be my own personal opinion, but I feel like you know, drill because that's what Pop Smoke was, right? He was a drill artist though. He was he. It wasn't necessarily he drill. Have, he didn't only have drill. It, it, honestly, it wasn't. What, no, it, no, it really wasn't drill because you wasn't he big on the drill scene or am no? I mistaken? No, he was from New York. So basically, like Chicago, like a Lil Durk, uh, Polo G, uh, Chief Keef, a um, Vaughn, King Vaughn. So you're saying he's that's more drill? King, he's more, that's drill. Okay, so what he, is he he didn't really fit. That's what I'm saying. So his he, his he style. His style was more of like, because he wasn't like a Chief Keef. Like drill is like like mm. the shit like um, when Chief Keef dropped. I don't like that's the shit I don't like. That was just like some shit that you like bang your head to. Like you're in the crowd, you're moshing. Yeah. Like pop was more hip hop rap, and like that's what you do in like like club type music. Yeah. Like you're gonna be you're gonna be sitting there like singing it, but you're not gonna be going crazy like a drill artist. Okay. So he was more of like in his own lane. That's why I'm saying I think that All he right. would have bridged that old school. It was like he was like more of like a 50, 50 cent. Like I feel that. his music wasn't really drill, but it was like old school rap, like a Tupac, yeah. like a Biggie. Like that's mm -hmm. kind of where pop fit in. As with the new new school is really just drill. And then you got the other guys like your little Uzi, Lil Yachty, everyone else. Because there's drill and then the opposite spectrum of that, which is like the pop rap. Yeah. And I would consider I would I it's it's hard to dis, it's hard to distinguish the genres, right? Cuz you don't want to discredit anybody and you don't want to mislabel them, right? Cuz that's fucked up. But at the same time, like the way I hear it or the way I perceive it, you know, for like juice would be like a pop rap, right? Like, definitely he's rapping. You can definitely see his lyrical skills. But, you know, the beat itself isn't like an old school Funkadelic type beat. And it's not a fucking, uh, it, but it's more of like the new school, you know, like it, it just feels more modern. And I guess you could say the beats feel more modern compared to like, you know, what used to be going on. So it's definitely, you know, it's, it's just a, it, it's just different nowadays, you know, it's just different. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I think that the new school definitely that this era of music is gonna go down in history as one of the most interesting. Yeah. Um. In a good and bad way. Uh. But yeah, I think that out of those three, obviously, sadly, the the death and passing of all three of them yeah. propelled them into into a new level of stardom that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that, yeah, in my opinion, there, Pop Smoke was one of the only new school rappers that really had the chance Broke to bridge. The mold. Yeah, he, he was, he was going to be the bridge, I feel Wasn't like, from just another, new not school. a clone, but just another new school. Right. Because honestly, rapper. there are a lot of Lil Uzi Vert clones. There are. And a I'm, shit ton. And I can't. That try to copy the flow style and it doesn't fucking work. Some of them don't work. Some of them do work. Like I like the Luzi. I like Luzi Vert. I like Juice World. I like fucking Trippy Red. But that's about that's about it, really. You know, right. when you hear when the new people come up out of nowhere and they just sound exactly like Juice or Trippy. You know, when they have the same exact kind of song, you know, and they're not already established, it's like it does feel look a little clone. It does feel like a clone, right? Yeah, it just feels like you're trying to, you know break off a piece of what everybody else is already getting. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So I, I, the originality that pop smoke brought to the table definitely was, you know, I feel like something that, that stood out. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, what? isn't that a crazy thing? Like when you, when these people, um, die, what, what is it about that, man? What is it about? I was it? just thinking the same thing. I was thinking about how to ask this. I was thinking the same thing. It's like, it's almost morbid, you know, it's that more, isn't it? It's that morbidity. I don't know if that's a word. It's that morbid, you know, way of thinking that all humans kind of have where it's like, oh, he's dead now. Now I should give a fuck. Let me, let me try. Let me try it out. Isn't that really, that honestly, you're, you're so right. It's very morbid. You'll never be more like 
An artist will never sell more paintings until after they die. You fucking and a you, fucking ex was never more popular until after he got murdered. You want to you know and, what I mean? and like, honestly, that, it happens. <clears throat> it's, it's in every art medium, you know. It's in every medium of art. Like when you die, it becomes more valuable because you're not around to make more. I guess is the that's what way I was about. To, that's what I was about to add to what you were just saying. <clears throat> it makes them more rare it makes the tracks more rare more set in stone mm -hmm. like this if you're listening to this track dior from a uh, pop smoke yeah you're like oh shit this song's pretty good you're not gonna get any more of that that's a one of one because yeah. you know how artists eventually pitter off and like they'll try new things no like necessarily like when they start their career they're insanely good. They're rising, they're rising, they're rising. And then eventually, naturally, they, they fall off. Only, exactly. They only have so much creativity and uniqueness to offer. So that kind of pitters off. But when you have an artist who just goes up and passes away, sadly, it never really comes down because that's the only tracks that they ever fucking made. Mm -hmm. But when you have an artist who goes up and then their music continues to come out, and it just sounds the fucking same, the baby. Yeah, like his fucking music was so good at the beginning, but then we're like, oh, it's now it's all the fucking same album. Oh, so you're saying he should have died three years ago? Yes. <laughs> no, but it, like for example, if the baby did make, like for example, if the baby made three albums and then let's say he passed away. We'd be, like, three albums, we'd be like, fuck, man, I wish we could have had a fourth. But sometimes but it's we, not. But, yep. But in reality, we did get that fourth. Exactly. And it was way worse than the first three. Exactly. So now we're just like, well, exactly. He should have just, died. <laughs> should've, should've just fucking died when he had the chance. Just dog. kidding, to baby. Please don't be mean to us. Yeah, dude, he'd beat the shit out of us. You think? Maybe not you. You're you're a lot bigger than him. He'd probably beat me up. He would probably make He's a his, thick boy. He would probably hire. You would probably pay somebody to beat me up. Is what yeah. he would do. He would try. He would punch me in the face, and then he would see you, and, and then like, he'd make a phone call. And then he would turn around to his three bodyguards and be yeah, like, yeah. "Fucking fuck this big motherfucker <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, take him out for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah." All right, sorry, the baby. Don't worry. <laughs> Shit, trouble. dude. I mean, we, we didn't, didn't know I you didn't... Were, we, we thought you were chill like that. God we damn, man. Sorry. Um, I didn't know you take it like that. No, but it's like, um, yeah, it, it is very, it is an unfortunate, like, morbid thing that the human kind kind of, you know, does. It's like, you know, in a in a in a morbid way, it's like we're just infatuated with death. You know. Well, what I, mean? I feel like we're more infatuated with. Again, the fact that they're gone now gives it attention, and then we're like, well, might as well listen to it because we're never going to get more. Well, might as well. And another thing is like, well, now I might as well try it out. Yep. Right? It's like, oh, I've never heard. Who's this XXX? I've never heard of this. It's like some 64-year-old grandma. It's like, who's this XXX? I've never heard of him. Who is this? And then it's like, fucked up, fucked up, <laughs> dog. Fuck it on your pussy. Fuck it you on know? that pussy. And then it's like, you know, they and she's like, well, they do call him Young Dagger Dick. They <laughs> they call him Young Dagger Dick. That's what they call him. Was that his nickname? He said it in a song. Oh, young. They call me Young Dagger Dick. Was that the exact uh, quote? Top five nicknames. Uh, number four would have to be Young Dagger Dick by XXX. <laughs> That's Once a again, good nickname. Really fits the character. Really fits the persona. Why? Because he only fucks bitches when he's on his period. I, I don't know. Or when that. they're on their period. I was gonna say he's got a period. <laughs> yeah, he's got one too. You know, he just actually has a we. Uh, he's like he's he got like a has a dagger. He has like a, a kink where he's like, they're like, I want to fuck. He's like, all right, are you on your period? They're like, <laughs> they're like, no, actually, that's yeah, we can we can do it right now. He's like, nah. Eh, call me back in a month. Call me. <laughs> Call me back in a couple call weeks. Call me back on your next ovulation cycle. Call me back in another week, dog. They don't call me Young Dagger Dick for f no fucking reason. I I beat I'm up not, that dude. Pussy. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie. I wouldn't even be shocked if he's the type of person who only fucks bitches when they're on a period. 
He might have He's been. A, he was a psychopath, low key dog. He was insane. Rest in peace, of course. Rest in peace. Of course. Hey, no disrespect. Rest in peace. But, but yeah, he was an eccentric. He was a fucking psychotic he was an person. Kind I feel of like person. he was neurodivergent. If I've ever seen one, that's a good way to put it. You know, <laughs> he he was he broke the mold. You know, he just, yeah he, he did. wasn't part of he, he was, did he wasn't know? he wore like chains around his neck and shit. He had some good albums, though. Hey, he did have some good albums. But that's the thing. I loved the fact that he could go from, like, the fucking crazy-ass screaming, but he could also do, like, the the softer songs, you know, like the cooler, yeah. you know. No, I'm going to be honest. He was a great artist because of his range and, and the things that he, he could do on tracks. Had good range. Definitely I would good say, range. Uh, to be honest with you, there was a um, a quote from – Conor McGregor didn't make this up. He – he, he uh, I think Conor McGregor quoted a famous um, philosopher, mm-hmm. and uh, it was something like, "You know, to to truly be a master of your craft, you have to lose your mind a little bit." You ever seen that? Mm, no. Let me pull it up. Probably, but not not, not off on, the top of the dome. Can I remember? I'm gonna pull it up. I'll put it on screen. It was basically something like to to truly be like a master of your craft, you have you have to kind of lose your mind a little bit. Yeah, and Honestly, that's kind of what X did. You know, he he lost his mind a little bit. He um, and a lot of you know artists like a Marilyn Manson, you know, like only a psychotic motherfucker can really bring that that uh, that level of creativity. I feel like. Did you know that? Uh, did you ever watch like a Marilyn Manson interview? Because you would no. think like he's a disturbed individual. You would think like he's nuts. He's like, he's just crazy, right? Like uh-huh. who would fucking like, but he's actually like, I watched the video. It was like, it was another like small little thing on TikTok. It was only like a two minute long clip, but he, uh, he's actually like, you know, the way he, like he's very soft spoken, you know, and he's a, like very intelligent and very like, he, he thinks about what he says and he's got a nice vocabulary, you know? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just pulled this up. Sorry to cut you off. I'm going to no, put this up on screen. Um, but here. I wanted to read you a quote from 2013 that you said. I've lost my mind on this game like Vincent van Gogh dedicated his life to his art and he lost his mind in the process. That's happened to me, but fuck it. When that gold bellwork is around my waist and my mother has a big mansion, my girlfriend has a car for every day of the week and my kids' kids get everything they ever wanted, then it will pay, then I'll be happy, I lost my mind. Can you just reflect and talk to me about how that makes you feel hearing that in 2021? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, it's been some ride, I've, I've got it done, and I'm up here, mad as a brush, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been through it all, my friend, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate that, and, uh, it's been a world ride for me. It's not been easy at times, but, but you know, what a life. And I, I tell you what, I wouldn't want it to be any. You know, that's, that is such a, like. When you're starting. It show. is, it is a pretty, that is a, it's almost beautiful. Like, it's a beautiful quote. It is, dude. Okay, not to. Because it's got so on, much meaning. Hang on, Conor, like, the Conor McGregor quotes too much, but. You ever seen the thing where he was talking about? I think I showed. I think did we talk about this on the podcast before? Which one? Uh, I don't think we talked about Connor on the co- podcast before, but there was a quote where he was like, um, or he it wasn't even a quote; it was just him talking about how he inevitably ended up following his dream and per- pursuing uh, his dream of being a champion in UFC or the mixed martial arts, and he um, was as construction job. You ever he- seen that one? I'm going to put it up just because we're on this topic already. There was this. So basically he talks about how he was back in Ireland and he um, was at has his lunch for his job. And there was a light rain going on. Um, and let me pull this up because this it'll, it'll give a lot better of a, of a context here. But what Conor McGregor. What did he have? Construction. Construction. This is actually it. So but. you think you know Wicks. Do you really? First 
up, we've got shakes and video masks. You can... How did they know? And James uh, quoted you. He posted a quote of yours. And it's actually something that uh, I think has struck a nerve with a lot of people. Uh, this is from LeBron. He posted your quote. There's no talent here. This is hard work. This is an obsession. Talent does not exist. We are all equals as human beings. And then it's all about just its dedication and time and obsession. And it's funny because I've actually talked to a lot of young people over the years that have said, I'm interested in show business. I say, look, we don't know what talent is, mm. but nothing beats really hard yeah. work. This is something that means a lot to you. That's yeah. a message that means a lot yeah, to you. Yeah, I, I truly believe we are all equal as human beings. If, if we are obsessed with something and we truly pursue our passion with everything we have, regardless of any, anything else, if you are obsessed, uh, work hard, put in the time, you will succeed. And, and that is a philosophy that I carry, my coaches carry, and, and to see LeBron James, who's like a mega uh, superstar over here and a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete, share um, that belief is, is inspiring right back to me. It, it shows that we are thinking correct. You know, this is, this is hard work. This is an obsession. Nothing can beat hard work. You ha you've actually, ex yeah. And I, you had an experience where there was a period of your life where you were a plumber. Mm -hmm. You were a plumber, and then you decided one day... I certainly didn't work hard in the plumbing game, because I, I, <laughs> you know, I wasn't obsessed. You I blew it. Passionate. If you had really worked hard, you could be a plumber right now. Exactly, yeah. You know, if you're doing something and you're not in interested or you have no passion for it, you, you really... You should truly follow your passion. I so what did you do? Say. Describe that. You were working as a plumber one day, and there was one day when you said... Yeah, well, I mean, I had many days on, on site, it's cold, it's damp, it's dark, and I'm looking around at everyone else, and it is not a good, but not that if you're passionate about that, then, then that's okay, but for me, it just wasn't the life I wanted to live, and I was in, I remember during a one lunch break, I was in the car park, and it was pissing rain down, and um, I just said to myself, I don't, there was some music playing, and I, it was like some, there wasn't even words to it, it was just a kind of a beat, and I got like real, I, I went somewhere with it, and I was like, I'm, I'm out of here, I'm, I'm gonna just, drive out, out of this building so I head home and, and, and pursue this dream of, of becoming a world champion in mixed martial arts. And that's what I did. I drove home. Um, when I got home, my mother and father said, how come you're not still at work? And I said, I'm never going to go back to that site uh, another day in my life. And then all hell broke loose. But I... It's a different fight, yeah. I assured them that... Um, I was going to go and do this. I was going to put everything into it. And, and although they didn't understand that at that time, through, through hard work, mm -hmm. through dedication, they saw what I was uh, pursuing and they supported me and, and I, I done it. I did, I did it. That, that like little snippet where he goes, I was at my nine to five, I was in a construction site, I was in the building and it was piss and rain. He said that there was no music playing, there was no words to the music, but there was music in his head, there was like a beat. And he had an epiphany and just said, fuck this, I'm, I'm going to drive out of here and I'm never coming back. And he fucking did it. Mm -hmm. And now he is... The biggest <sighs> combat sports professional. Probably of all time. Of all time. Potentially. I mean, other than he's, he's definitely top five. five. Yeah, you got your... Mike, you got your Floyd, you got your Muhammad Ali, and, you know, he's, I think he's probably four or five after that. They all, those, all those guys have great nicknames, by the way. They do have, they have really good nicknames. The Notorious, <laughs> Conor McGregor, Iron Mike, pretty, pretty boy Floyd's kind of. Floyd Money Mayweather. Money. Oh, that's right. You know, yeah. earlier in his career, he was named uh, Pretty Boy Floyd. Yeah, that was not as good as money. Yeah, money's better because it encapsulates what, what That's he him, is. Yeah, for it's, sure. it's for sure him. And then what is Muhammad Ali's nickname? Is he the greatest or? Uh oh, we're very uncultured right now. Oh god. Uh oh. You're gonna search it up on YouTube. <laughs> for anyone who can't see, we're, we we went. Uh, we're on YouTube and watching that that Conor McGregor clip, and he erases what I put to see what his nickname was. The greatest, the Louisville Lip, or the People's Champion. 
He didn't have very good nicknames. Those were all ass. Those the greatest all kind of is, once again, it's like, it's like the Shaq thing. But, dude, thing. honestly, it's, like, it's, it's almost like these motherfuckers were built in labs because it's weird. Like, Michael Jordan didn't really have a fucking nickname. And everyone he does have a nickname, and I can't believe we were talking. We were talking about this. Michael Jordan does have a nickname. We were like Air it's just M- Air Jordan. We forgot about Air Jordan. Okay, you're right. That's kind of good. And that is kind of good, right? All right. Well, yeah. I mean, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I don't know, man. Back on that topic of this, you know, of of that. What are some really great nicknames for people that aren't necessarily like goats in their sport? Um, like, um, white chocolate, Jason Williams, yep. Jason Williams. You don't think Jason Williams, you don't look at Jason Williams and think greatest point guard of all time. You don't think any of that, but you do think he's smooth. You do think white chocolate. You know what yeah, I mean? no, definitely. So that's a name that definitely, and he's white. So that's, if it was dark chocolate, he probably wouldn't fit. Right, right. No, but he's white he's... chocolate because he's a white man and he's smooth. He's smooth, smooth criminal. He is. Um, See another another good nickname for it's another basketball guy, mm-hmm. Andre Kurlenko, AK forty seven. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's a good one. Okay, if you could be kind of switching topics here, if you could be in any major sport. Which one would you pick and why? All right, and that's a very good question, but I gotta ask I gotta ask if there's any stipulations. Am What's I, the stipulation? Oh, excuse me. Am I just me just joining you're the roster? You. You're just you. Well, you're gonna yeah, or you're will, you, but you're gonna be I really choose, good. If I choose basketball, am I gonna be able to dunk now yes. and hit a three ball? Yes. So if I choose baseball, I'll be like the best baseball player in the league. Yes. If you could pick one to be the best at. If we got, if we're gonna, think okay, not about the best, this, but you're like an all star. Okay, if we're gonna think about this logically, the smaller the ball, the bigger the paycheck. Your dick? Oh, technically, like technically speaking, that also the works. smaller the ball, the bigger the paycheck. No, the other thing you said: if the smaller the balls, the bigger the dick. Um, like factually, like that's true. Scientifically really? speaking, where'd you read that? You read that somewhere? <laughs> yeah, it was a study. Oh, okay. It was a study. They were like on the internet. So they were like they went up so like okay, so let's let's run through think this. Think about right? this. Just think about a logic. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. Just think let's about a let's run through this. I'm I'm a professor at Harvard, you know, and I'm I'm bringing mm-hmm. it to the board. And and who do I play in this? Well, you're going to play the guy who I come up to and ask if I can do a study on your penis. Okay. Okay, so makes sense. I'm I'm the professor at Harvard. I'm like Hmm. Doctor, Doctor, uh, Doctor Ball. Doctor Ball. Yes, yes, uh, Doctor Rose. Doctor Balls. How how are you? I am very good, doc, uh, Mister Rose. I, you know, I was just talking to the board of administrators of Harvard. Yeah. And um, prestigious, very prestigious uh, group of people. I, I might add. Uh-huh. Um, we have chosen to select you. Um, oh wow! For a like fine a scholarship, spec- scholarship a, or something? A fine specimen, not necessarily a scholarship. Like um, but... you guys are gonna like, like I'll get like some free, you know, like tuition or something. Right? Like yeah. That. No, absolutely. Now we will we'll heavily compensate you for this. We chose you for a very specific uh, case study on okay. how big your penis and shaft ratio is to your nutsack. Oh wow. Yeah, we already have um, 15 other guys in, in the other room. They're all butt naked as we speak. Um, do you have about 15 minutes? We just measure that dick up for you. And is there any requirements? You know, like, um, What are you looking for? Like bigger balls, bigger dicks? I mean, really, we're just going to measure the girth. We'll, uh, we'll see how... <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see the, um, you know, the... Uh, the length as opposed to the the width the gooch nut sack ratio oh wow um You're and then some scientific some scientific and then we'll add them all up and then we'll divide them by how many people were in the study 
Okay. And then we're going to post it on our website. What, what, what website are you guys posting this on? Um, Bigolddick.org. Okay. Dot org. I like that. Yeah. It's a credible source. Well, it's an organized. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's a dot org. There's a, there's a sister company called Big Old Ballsack.gov, but we don't talk about them. They're shady. Oh, we don't yeah. like them? No, we don't like them. Seriously, though, I wonder how many, like, um, like, dude, they do some crazy studies. Just in general? Like, are you talking about studies in general? That yeah, been, like, who the fuck, general? like, thinks of these? Like, they get in a room and they're like, what are we going to do a study on now? They're like... I don't know, fucking – yeah, look up the top five I was gonna say cr- most cr- absurd cr- studies ever done. research studies. Craziest research studies ever conducted. You're passing oh. them all. Well, that's that one's pretty funny. Hold on. So on the site <clears> – <throat> Number one, study shows beneficial effect of electric fans and extreme heat and humidity. That's why I was skipping those ones. Oh, God. <laughs> what is this shit? Um, you know, these, these studies fucking... just feel fucking obvious. Craziest research studies ever conducted. Top 10 weirdest science studies of 2019. 2019. Number one, a hunt for Loch Ness monster DNA. Yeah, they were just fucking bored as fuck. A knife made from poop. That's good. Why is that good? Like, who the fuck? So many scholars are familiar with the strange story of an Inuit. Inuit man who, upon being stranded during a storm, fashioned a knife from his own frozen poop and use it to butcher a dog. What the fuck? That's disgusting. My thing is, how do you you sharpen your poop knife? With more poop. You make a poop wet uh, wet stone. (laughs) And you just... (laughs) Sharpen it with your own shit. You sharpen it with shit. Dude. You use your shit to sharpen You know what? I'll tell you one thing. That is fucking inhumane and disgusting, but that can't. He's kind of a genius. No. (laughs) You're like, like, you're like, that's like a poison blade. But he fucking butchered a dog with it. Yeah, and then he eats that meat that's soiled with shit. Well, he probably just flipped the dog over and ate the other side. Or how does that even? No, that's not how that works. Really? No. <laughs> oh shit! I mean, no. what? I didn't even know that a shit knife could be a thing. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like we're learning new. What? Like, okay. How so you, what's? How do you sharpen your shit? With a shit whetstone, dog. Do sorry, you... sorry. The shit. Jesus. Whetstone. Plants that eat salamanders. Eh. Shut up. Your tongue can smell like a nose can. Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of cool, but like, eh. Vampire tree leeches nutrients from its neighbors. So this vampire is sucking, sucking all that life force out of its tree friends that's planted near it. You know, a sound so loud it vaporizes water. Yeah, it would also probably vaporize your eardrums if it's that loud. Jesus Christ. But these aren't studies. They just they just told us a bunch of weird facts. I don't even know, dude. Yeah, like what the fuck was that? Seven scientific studies that are too weird to believe. Sure. Okay, let's read it. This is from in businessinsider.com. When you attach a weighted stick to a chicken's butt, the chicken walks in the same manner that the dinosaurs are thought to have walked. What a fucking dude! Who's who? And who knows what the dinosaurs looked like when they were walking? Please. First of all, and what does the chicken have to do with that? See, I'm very confused on who the fuck stuck a weight in a chicken's ass to find this out. A really long stick, apparently. Was it just a really long stick? 
did they shove it in or just tape it to the outside of the chicken? Um, these are the hard hitting questions, right? Yeah. Okay, this is a good one. That's that one's good. One yeah, brave good scientist question. got honeybees to sting him repeatedly in twenty five different spots in the body to see which area hurt the most. All right. Well, if he didn't do a dick sting, then is this study even valid? You're right. You're hundred percent. Let's see if we he did a dick sting. You can't see the body parts. You can see the body oh. parts. That entomologist Michael Smith subjected the bee stings in the illustration to the right. He rated his pain on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay. Unsurprisingly, all the stings induced induced pain. pain. Wow. The nostril, the (laughs) upper lip, and penis shaft. Were the three most painful. The The skull, skull, the middle toe tip, and upper arm were the three least painful. So if you're going to get stung by a bee, right here is good. Or the, not your dick. Try to try to try, try to, to avoid keep the, the shaft. Try to keep the bee away from your dick shaft, and then you should See, be okay. What kind of maniac though? Like does that? Like he's just like a main a main of science. He's just like you know what? I'm sick of this boring shit. I'm going to this fucking science shit. I'm trying to learn the periodic table. Let me let this bee sting my penis. I think he's just he has a kink of some sort. I mean, that's a good way to disguise it. That's a I'm, good way. I'm an entomologist, okay? <laughs> I'm an... Uh, I, I'm studying... I have a fucking PhD. I have a PhD in fucking insects. Now, someone right? record this. And I'm he a... just grabs a bee and, like, proceeds... How did he make the bee sting him on the dick? Well, it's not hard to get a bee to sting you, dude. So he just, like, grabbed it and was like... Well, the way... Um... Dude, that's a kink. He literally got his... Got, Stung on 25 different parts of his body. He wasn't trying to figure out which part hurt the most. He was trying to figure out which part hurt the best. That's exactly fucking right. What a kinky little entomologist. That's a quote. That's a good quote from you. <laughs> he wasn't trying to see what hurt the most. He was trying, trying to, to see, see what, what hurt, hurt the best. best. Bonnie Rose, 2023, baby. Oh, for all you kinky little entomologists out there, that one's for you. I just farted, by the way. Oh, here's a good one. We've learned that there may be some surprising biological benefits of intense, intense kissing. kissing. Surprising biological benefits. Are we going <laughs> to... You want to test it out? Are we going to test this out? I'm, I'm certainly not opposed. Um, oh, wait. This research suggests that the saliva exchange can reduce a person's allergic response Oh, wait. The setup for this experiment sounds hilarious. Well, let's see how hilarious right. it is. The subject kiss freely during 30 minutes with their lover or spouse alone in a room with closed doors while listening to soft music. The researchers write in the study published by the... F- oh, God. So they were just having sex. That's it? Yeah, they were just fucking. They were that. fucking. They said... Let's see. This is definitely no one goes and closes a door in a room, listens to soft music, and intensely kisses. If you two go in that room and intensely and passionately make love while listening to soft music, then you should have less allergies. That's really helpful. Is that really what they came? That really the conclusion they came to? That's all you have to do. Okay, so let's say you're a scientist, right, Doctor Rose? Yeah. Um. What would you? What would be your go-to like major, or like what? What would what would you be studying? As a professor, mm-hmm. personally, I would have a PhD because you can really get a PhD in anything, right? You would you uh, with your skill set, your you could get a really good PhD from for sucking dick. Mm-hmm. Like with your skill set, especially like that's like, oof. like my specific skill set. Yeah, like yeah. you'd be one of the top students in your class, I'm sure. I, I think I would be top three, easily, easily top three. And you know what's funny is like, um, there was like a, there was this movie once uh-huh. called Bruno. Have you ever heard of it? No. Do you know who Sasha Baron Cohen is? The guy who does Borat. Yes. 
So he made this movie called Bruno, and Bruno's like this gay Austrian fella. Okay. And basically, does he play Bruno? And he plays Bruno, the okay. gay Austrian. And basically, one of the lines in the movie was like, "Trust me, I have a PhD in sucking dick." So it's like, it's a very, it's a very funny, it's a very funny quote. And I figured if anybody I know could have a PhD in sucking dick, it's you. You're such a good friend, dude. I appreciate that. Honestly. No, but seriously, like, and you, your words are just, just so kind to me. No, because like that's it's, I, but I want you to know that I mean that, like that's coming from the heart. Like I truly mean, like you know, your lips, you know, just so they just get the job done. Get the job done. You know. Okay, realistically, but no. Uh, can you have a PhD in anything? Like actually a PhD in and, anything? And that's and that's honestly a really good question. Uh, I actually don't know. I feel like you can. No? I also feel like you can because I know it's just that... as, it's it's just whatever if you can study something you get a PhD in it. Yeah. Can you get a PhD pretty huge dick? Mm -hmm. In, in anything. anything. Like what's the criteria <laughs> to get a pretty huge dick? Or is it just in the health field? Okay, so this is the this is the right answer. So for a PhD, you can study almost anything you like, as long as the research department at your university approves it. Sounds like I'm gonna be the next the next doctor. The next doctor of second dick. My Wait. But I see, would not, I would want nothing less for you too. I would not. I would want nothing. Like that's like you deserve that, you know. Right, right. So, I'm trying to imagine, like, PhD. Like, if you if you did get a PhD, no. Or I'm real, trying to think of like what like what I would really like study. a real a real PhD. The cool thing is you could get a PhD in like sports. Mm, like uh you could do sports medicine, you could have you could do sports history. Sports sure history, you could do a PhD yeah. in sports history, I think. That would be kind of cool. And that would be super sick. You just go to like uh oh, but then it, the I doctor, feel like it you're really a doctor? Bad. Yeah, doctor of sports nerd. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dude, the doctor. Dude, that would of be sports, really bad cuz you'd have to go to 8 years of just Learning people's names and when they played basketball. Yeah, Eight years but... is a long time, dude. It's don't really you think time. it'd be sick to be like a doctor of sports? Um, Not like sports medicine. You don't want to help the players. I just want to know about them. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of that might be fun. Because if you if you know all this stuff about sports history, you could just be like you know those um you know those uh shows they have on tv yes. or like those documentaries they have and they interview these people you don't know who the fuck these people are but apparently they're experts on whatever they're talking about right right you could be the go-to guy for sports documentaries to talk about sports history yeah you could and be that's that go-to guy at least a, that's got to be a pretty paycheck right that's got to be at least a little bit yeah you know okay i feel like if I could be a PhD really in anything, though, it would be in how to sharpen poop. <laughs> Off the you, earlier topic. Dude, you literally already knew this everything. This is a hard You already question. knew what to do. Yeah, whetstone. Make a poop whetstone. So you were already, like, way ahead of the game. Like I was you, already ahead of, the, ahead of the curve there, I think, yeah. And that's why I'm thinking – you might have been the guy that they're talking about. Like, that was you in the city. I, it was, it, yeah. So, what happened was. So, when you were in Wisconsin. It, it got really cold, yeah. I Listen, the grocery store was closed. I seen a squirrel running across the street. And you didn't have any food for the week because the grocery store was closed. Because the grocery store was closed. And I had to It's also to negative 20 degrees out right now. That's right. And my shit. As soon as it hit the ground, it froze. So yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Does it come out frozen, or is it like no? You it have takes. To wait a little you bit? have to prepare it. So you shit, and then you kind of like drag your ass across the floor. So it kind of like leaves it very nice and straight, mm -hmm. and then you kind of mold it with your hands a little bit. Do you make like a handle? 
Um, there's no need for a handle. So it's not necessary. Then. It's not necessary. So you just want to, but here's the other question. It's the fact that, you know, after you, do you poop the blade or the whetstone first? Um, well, you poop the whetstone first. Cause, and then the blade if, you sharpen. Because if you, if you poop the blade first, it's more just like you just have like a log of shit. Yeah. That's, that's never good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I think that um, if I could have a PhD in anything, it would be how to, how to make sharpening, a shit knife. Sharpening poop. How to make a shit knife. Um, fuck yeah, dude. I think that... Uh, See, we never went to college, but could you tell? Do you think they could tell? Do you think? Yeah, can you guys tell? Uh, tell us down below. Can you tell that we never went to college, or is this like, do we sound really articulate? Yeah, we use big words, but we don't know what they actually mean sometimes. Speak for yourself. I know what all the words mean. I'm just, okay. I just know I'm stupid. Right, right. You can know big words and still be dumb. Okay, that's a good superpower. Like knowing exactly what to stupid. say. Knowing you're stupid is not a good superpower because, like, you know how it's to not use a superpower. it. But then you know how to use it. Like, if you're like, I know that I'm, I'm just stupid. stupid, then you know how to be like, be like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to rob that bank. I'm stupid. Sorry, I'm uh, like, I know, I fucking killed those three civilians. I know it was. I know but I, I'm just so stupid. I yeah. know I was drunk driving and drove into that nursery, but I'm oh dumb. Dude, I know. Cut me some slack here. I'm a goofball. I know I wasn't supposed to shit in. Um, I know I wasn't supposed to make that poop knife, but what can I say? I'm just dumb. I know dumb. I wasn't supposed to make that poop knife and go in on a rampage, but what else was I supposed to do? I'm stupid. How long do you think a poop knife could last? It's good for one use, dog. That's... <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> the, warmth, the, warmth would, the warmth of the dog. human body would destroy the knife. It's good for one shot. You got one chance. One use only. You got one chance. But where do you plant the knife? In the side. Like here? Yeah. Just here? Yes. You're not going for a jugular shot? Okay, well, what are You're we talking poop about? directly into the bloodstream if you do it that way. It's like direct... Direct poison into the bloodstream with your. Poop. Imagine you. Okay, imagine. That's what I'm saying. It's like a toxic. Blade. Hold on, hold on. Imagine a fucking motherfucker comes and he he makes it. You like you come across a maniac who made a poop knife, and he he's no, he's running poop knife. He grabs it and he's chasing you, and and then and I you, run into a, a no, no, no 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 I run into a warm building so the poop knife. <laughs> Right, right. Melts no, no. So I make a, hand. I make the poop knife. So you're the poop murderer. So I'm the poop murderer. You see me coming. You see me coming, and I have the poop knife in my hand. Oh my god! You start running. I'm no. chasing you. You trip and you fall, and then I'm like, ha ha, gotcha. Looks like you're having a shitty day. <laughs> and then I go to to end you, but when I go to stab you, it just disintegrates, and you I just have shit all of your body. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Damn it, I didn't make the tip pointy Fuck. enough. Fuck. And then the cops show up and they, they just arrest me. And you have, you're like. So it, it went from attempted murder to just like it, battery. With it went poop. from like, just yeah. Battery with poop. But it went from like, so like a, tw a, a life sentence to like, we just need to get this guy in some therapy or something. Cause like, no, what? Dude, you're getting five years for that. For a t But what, uh, what, I could just be like, what do you mean? I just. I just rubbed sh my shit all over him. I wasn't. Yeah, I'm pressing charges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, officer, you just fucking came to me and rubbed poop all over me. Get it like, out of here. How, I don't how, insane, this guy. how insane would you sound if you were like in the court, like, no, he meant to murder me with that shit. <laughs> like, he had imagine, a shit knife. Imagine being the murderer and dying on that hill. Well, like, dude, no. If only I had more time with my poop knife, I could have done more damage. <laughs> dude, but no, I think that they would actually think that you would be insane if I tried to kill you with a shit knife because... Guys, he, he used a poop knife on me, guys. You got to believe me, jury. <laughs> you, were, you were like, I swear to God, he fashioned a knife out of his own shit. And they'd be like, dude. I saw the whetstone. <laughs> Yeah, he was like, I, I saw the whetstone. I came around the corner. I saw him sharpening that shit knife with more he shit. He was walking down the alleyway, sharpening his shitty whetstone <laughs> with the shitty knife. And 
they would be like, it scared me. I was scared. They would be like, what the smell. The I could never forget the smell. <laughs> but they would be like, what the fuck are these people on? They might lock us both up. They might be like, dude, fuck it. Put both of them in there. They're both, they were both, they're both schizophrenic. <laughs> they're both, they both have they're slight both dementia. They're both schizophrenic and they need help. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was the poop knife. I'm telling you, he fucking chased me with the knife fashion of shit. They're, they're like, dude, no fucking chance. Now, how do you explain this? And I lift my shirt, and then I'm just covered in poop. <laughs> <laughs> then explain this. Oh, God. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty funny. Dude, if you could be um, a judge. Like a think? real, like America's Got Talent judge or like one of the gavel judges? No, one of the gavel judges, like. Do you think that you would um and you could and you could hand out sentences without a jury? Do you think that you'd be like oh, a good guy or do you think that's too much power? And you'd just be like It's definitely too much power. And they I would immediately say one word that you don't like. I would definitely be having a bad Electric day. chair. I would definitely be having a bad day and give someone thirty years for jaywalking. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, she fucking goodness. missed too. She's been attacked. Oh, um, but um, yeah, no. So someone would someone would come in on a bad day, one of my bad days, and I would just be pissed off. And then they'd be like, "Yes, sir, I was jaywalking." Although I don't think it should be illegal. Like, what if they give me some attitude? I'm giving you 20 years. Now is jaywalking illegal? That's what I thought. <laughs> um, no, you know what's fucked too though is like, um. I feel like if you were a judge, right, and you were um, handing out sentences, you you don't have to have a jury to do it. Mm -hmm. It really would be – you think it would be a better system? No, 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 no. (laughs) No? No, dude. Yeah, because if you did have a bad day and you were just like, that's it, hanging by the ball sack – in public, public hanging. Dude, if you had a if you had a female judge and her boyfriend just cheated on her, immediately when a dude walk, the first dude who walks in there after that, the the gavel's just getting pressed down immediately, hanging by the the by the, the dick, hanging by the ball sack and the dick, in public execution. That would be a terrible way to go. Just until you die, you just because you're, you're just hanging on by the balls and the wiener and. And how and how would you be la- – You're just like you're hanging you're there. Laying. And you're like kind of like Suspended twisting in a circle. <laughs> you're like, ugh. End it. Yeah, it hurts so good. <laughs> yeah. Would your pe- your penis would fall off, right? And then, But then like would you Eventually. still live? And could if you, you if you live – Could you really it, live? You probably yeah. – I could mean end me at that point. But, exactly. but I mean so do you think that – you would – okay, that's a good question too though. Could you live without your dick and balls? So knowing what you know now, okay, your dick and balls fall off tomorrow because I came up and stabbed you with a shit knife um, if there was an infection and it just spread to your just dick and balls. Just debilitated my dick and balls. And they just fell I'm off sorry, Mr. Like Rose. Do. I'm sorry, Mr. Rose. We tried everything we could. We could not save your dick and balls. Your dick and balls are, aren't gonna make it. What? Um, <laughs> we have to amputate the dick and balls. Are How you, like, long do you think my you next, can make it? Like, what's my next step after that? Yeah. Like, do you think you can just live your regular life and not give a fuck, or is it is it gonna be like, what's the point now? I think I would definitely uh, not be okay with it for a little bit. I think it would take it. It would take at least a couple months to recover from that. Do they give you a pussy? Would they? Or I'm sorry. Would they, would they give, give you will a Will they pussy? give me a? Will they give me a vagina? So, you, so you're like, okay. Well, my dick so and if balls I can't have off, a dick and balls, will you give me a vagina? Might as well try out a vagina. Yeah, give that a go. But then you wouldn't have any sensation. It would just be an empty hole that's getting fucked. It would kind of yeah, be like. But then you, I would. It would kind of be like someone fucking your belly button. <laughs> you're just kind of like. You like that? And you're like, no. <laughs> God, you know. But maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you would like feel good in your brain because you're like, maybe I'm still part of something here. 
yeah, because at least, you know, because what's the alternative? Just sitting there doing nothing, right? The alternative is you have no no uh, sexual anything. So you're yeah, saying – Just give me a little hole. Just give me a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Yeah, you know what? You're right. If if my fucking dick and balls had to get amputated – Give me a puss. Might as well just get a puss and, and have no feeling and just be a part of it. Yeah, dude. Give me give me that puss. <laughs> Because you know YOLO, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean YOLO, and if I can't, might have as well a dick, start trying things at that point. YOLO, right? And if I can't have my dick and <laughs> balls anymore, give me a puss and let me try that. You out. might as well start trying things. Okay, okay. Let's say in the future, you ever played the game Cyberpunk? I haven't played it, but I know of it. Okay, let's say in the future, can't you pick your dick size in that game? You can. Um, let's say in the future animatronics become so big that we can actually interchange our body parts like that. Mm -hmm. What is the size of the penis that you're choosing? Are you just going, okay, if you had to choose one size forever, are you just going full on? Like, like monster cock? Monster? Or is it just like, just give me the average. It's like, There's hindrance. There's pros and cons to each. There's definite pros and cons. Pros are like, wow. Well, pros. <laughs> pros is just like, Pros wow. are like, wow. Like, like you walk into. You're well endowed. Yeah. Like, like when, you could be on like some browsers. Or, you're walking into the locker room. Everyone's taking a, taking a second to appreciate. Yeah, dude. Being the big swinging dick in a locker room. Yeah. I've never been that. I, yeah, you know. But let's say, let's say. So uh, will I also like? Do I get like other like? Or is this? Am I basically just acquiring like a normal penis, just picking my own length, or do I get like some gizmos and gadgets to go with my new robo dick? Well, they have to make it realistic. So if if you're going anything above ten inches, it's gonna be black. <laughs> <laughs> Because they we're not they they're not like they're they're getting real ones and they're just transplanting it on you, so they're not going to put are they are there a no, ten inch white penis on you? Are there no robo pusses? There's no robot vaginas around. Sure. What do you mean? So that's what I'm saying is like, if a robot dick can be like super big, then how big would a robot vagina be? The same size as a normal vagina, or would it be built for robot dicks? Because if you had an 18-inch long <laughs> robot dick, you would need a robot vagina. A real vagina is going to Hey, whoa. There. We're going 18 inches on them? I'm just saying. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> hypothetically speaking, of course, I'm just saying if. That's, you a, know? that's a deep chasm. But that's why you need a <laughs> robo vagina. That's why you need a robo fill. puss. <laughs> These you, are, hear me out. You're not hearing okay, me out. Okay, right. okay. <laughs> hear, you, hear you out. Okay. So, so it, okay. Let me get. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my checklist. So we're talking. We're, there's eight robo robo puss and robo pee and a robo cock. robo dicks robo okay. cock. Right. All right. Let me hear you out. So I'm saying, you know, anybody, you know. If, so you walked into. If the, we're in this world, right? right. If we're in this okay. cyberpunk. Yeah, we're in know, cyberpunk. You we, walked into the shop. You're like. I need an 18 inch penis. They're like, okay, we got it in the back for you. We'll be right out. But you wouldn't want an 18 inch penis if it's not going to fit anywhere. <laughs> so that's where the robo okay. puss comes in. <laughs> okay, so I walk in after you and I'm like, hey, yep, I need a 20 inch. I need a 20 inch deep. <laughs> I need, <laughs> where the fuck I need a 20 inch deep robo puss <laughs> implanted in me. Okay, do you have any twenty inch robo pusses back there? Like, yep, we got one right back. We got here. one. We, on. got, we just got. We just got them restocked we, today. Actually, we actually just got a twenty a, a fresh shipment. Um, just you, just wait right here. Do you want a u new uterus as well? Those just came in today as well. You know, it's like damn, dude, that would be intense if they started. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because if you're gonna make robo dicks, you would need because you wouldn't want to. Because that's half fit. the market you're missing out on there. Yeah. Well, half we the all value, know about sales. We all know about the sales business. Or you're saying half the value because, like, if you go get an 18 inch, you know, and only half it fits, it's like, well, I just lost half the value anyways. So. Not only did you lose half the value, but it's also like, how many normal women are going to be able to, you know, take that on? Dude, okay, you do need you think... a robot vagina to take on your robot penis. Okay. 
All right. Call me crazy for fucking thinking that. I mean, maybe I'm just wrong. Okay, I don't know. okay, but if you could, and you started, and you started um, making like, okay, no, okay, off these, off these actual topics, like reality here. If they did start making, you could start making changes to the body, like animatronic changes. Would you actually do it? Get a bigger weaver. <laughs> okay. Well, not necessarily. Fucking duh. <laughs> okay. The fuck. Not necessarily that. But if you were like, if you were like, we could cut, we'll just chop off your fucking right leg. Um, it'll hurt like a bitch at first, but then we'll just add a robot, a right robot leg, leg, and you'll be able to run ten percent faster. And you'll be able to run twenty percent faster and dunk like LeBron. Just one leg. I don't need well, both legs. Well, you're for gonna that. have to do both legs. They're gonna chop both your fucking <laughs> legs off, and they you have to let them heal first. So, like for like six months. I have to be legless. You have to be legless, because they have to. You have to let him heal first, obviously. Yeah, that would be. Uh, that's a good one. But if I'm getting like really, really high but, quality, dude, then likes, you're like you would be the man on the basketball court. Exactly, dude. And they could give me. A, they could give me a couple more inches on the legs as well. And yeah, then I could be like six eight, yeah. six nine. Yeah, sure. And then at that point, you don't need the. You don't even need the robot dick. Yeah. You well couple more inches might not hurt yeah <laughs> but okay also though do you think if that ever did happen everyone would just be walking around like fucking... robot dicks <laughs> dude robot everything they'd be like dude we're all fucking six Cyborg. foot nine fucking eight 18 inch penis <laughs> that would Cyborgs. be bad that would... hopefully they never come out with this shit because this would be really bad yeah dude because if i lived in a world where everybody was in a, a fucking six nine Robe cyborg with an eighteen inch wiener. Uh huh. I don't know if I want to live in that world. That <laughs> I would be like scared. It, that sounds like it really might scared. possibly be a little bit dangerous. I would be really scared every day that I walk around. Uh, every one of them. <laughs> one of them is just eighteen. You inches. could just see it as they walk in their pants. It's just like because, swaying because either they're wearing tight fitting pants and they're not swaying, so it's like just a mass. <laughs> A ba- it looks like a like, baseball bat. Or they're wearing like shorts and it's just peeking out through the bottom of the shorts. Yep. Or they're wearing loose fitting like sweats, you know, and that's where they, that's where they get the dangle going. It's just there. swinging. It's just swinging. These are good questions we ask on this on this mm-hmm. podcast. I mean, guys, these are the, these are the hard hitting questions. I mean, someone's yeah, got to ask them. If you guys have any questions you would love to hear us ask each other, please throw them down in the comments below. You know, throw them down there. Don't forget to also like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys sticking around. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Um, what else? See, we do ask the hard hitting questions. What's one question that you would ask? Let's let's say that I'm an all knowing being, right? So I'm an all knowing being, and you have one question to ask me. You only get one. Um. Oh, great one. Yes, please Mr. hear my call. Yes, youngling. Oh, great one. Yes. What happens after I die? Gang bang for all eternity. And you're the star of the show. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Um. Oh, great one. Great one. Yes. Who calls to me? It's me. It's me. Oh, great one. Oh, young, young Alex. How can I help you? How do you how do you sharpen the the shit knife? One of the oldest questions of time. You use the shit whetstone. You're goddamn right you do. That was the shittiest podcast on the internet. I'm Lo- I'm Lonnie. And I am Alex, and we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below if you anything you want to see, hear from us. Please, we love the interaction. And thank you guys so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. See ya. Bye.